If you want to get better at algebra, well, you need to do a lot of practice problems. So let's take a look at this question. We have negative 4m times 3m squared minus 5m plus 2. So this is a multiplication problem. We're going to take this thing and multiply it by this thing. All right, now, if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through and show you exactly how to solve this problem. And we're going to be talking about some really important algebra nomenclature or terminology that you need to know. But before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so what we're talking about here is a problem that a student would see in a course like pre-algebra, certainly Algebra 1. So we're trying to find the product of negative 4m and 3m squared minus 5m plus 2. So I think a really good place to start with this problem is to review some really important algebra words and concepts. So let's start with this word called a term. All right, so what is a term in algebra? Well, negative 5m would be a term. So would 3m squared. So would negative 4m. And even 2, we could think of as a term. Now, there's other uh, words that we can use to describe variable expressions in algebra, but basically terms are the building blocks of things that we can express in algebra. So let's take a look at this term right here, 3m squared. Now, all by itself, 3m squared, we can refer to this as a monomial. Okay, It's still a term, but it's a polynomial, and it's a uh, kind of one term polynomial. Okay, so I'm using another word here, which is critically important, and that is polynomial. So a one term polynomial, we would describe as a monomial. Now, if I add another term uh, to this monomial, so for example, 3m squared plus, let's say, 2, well, this is called a binomial, right? So a two term polynomial. And then if we have three terms, like what we have right here in our problem, we would call this a trinomial, a three-term polynomial. Now, if you have more than three terms, we would just refer to that thing as a polynomial. So what we have here is a monomial being multiplied by a trinomial. Okay, now let's uh, take a closer look at a term. So we'll go back to this 3m squared. So this is one term. Now the number in front of the variable part is called the coefficient. Okay, so the number in front of the variable is called the coefficient of that term. Now, of course, we have a variable, and then we have a power to that variable, okay, or an exponent, and we call uh, this the degree, okay? Now, we uh, generally use this word degree in terms of the highest power of a variable expression. So here we have a trinomial, and the degree of this uh, trinomial is 2. Okay, it's the highest power amongst all these terms. So there's a lot more here that you need to understand. We can have things called like terms. As a matter of fact, let's take a quick look at this because this is really important as well. So we can have terms that are, are like and not like. So if we have 3m and 7m, well, these are like terms. And what makes two terms like is that their variable parts are exactly the same, okay? In other words, they have to have the exact same variable and exact same exponent. So here we have m or m to the first power, and here we have m to the first power. So these two terms are like terms, and we could add these like terms, and the way we do that is add the coefficients. Okay, so 3 and 7 would be 10, and so our answer here, if we had 3m plus 7m, would be 10m. Okay, so we have like terms. So what uh, is an example of things not being like in terms of a term? 
Well, all you have to do is just change one of the terms to a variable or a degree that is not uh, the same as the other. So in other words, if I had like 7m squared, I could not add these two terms because they are not like. And the reason they are not like is because their variable parts are not exactly the same. This is m to the first, and this is m to the second. Okay, so this is a quick uh, review of terms and some basic uh, terminology that you need to understand in algebra. So what we're doing here is we're going to multiply this monomial times this trinomial. Now let me quickly uh, define what a polynomial is. This is such a critical word in algebra. And let's take a look at our 3m squared term. All right, so what is a polynomial in algebra? So what makes something a polynomial is the exponent, okay? So we have some variable. A polynomial has some sort of variable uh, part to it. And then it has a number in front of that variable. That's called the coefficient. So matter of fact, let's just talk about this real quick. So the number in front of the variable can be any real number, okay? So here is our number line. Here is zero. We can have one, two, negative one, negative two, any positive or negative decimal, whole number, fraction, doesn't make a difference. You can have that as your coefficient. And we can have any variable as well. But what makes a uh, term a polynomial term is the exponent. Okay, the exponent can either be 0, 1, 2, etc. And we call these numbers in mathematics the whole numbers, right? So we have the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, and so forth including zero, okay? So our exponent must be one of these numbers in order for a term to be a polynomial. This is critically important because not everything in mathematics is a polynomial. Matter of fact, if I had this right here, 3m squared, and instead of m squared, I had 3m to the one half power, well, this right here is not a polynomial. So uh, we would have to do some different mathematics actually uh, some of the uh, procedures are the same, but just recognize that this isn't a polynomial. Now, why is this important? Well, this is critically important when we go to solve equations in algebra, okay? One of the biggest equations that you solve in algebra is polynomial equations, and we learn a lot about polynomial equations and polynomials in general in courses like pre-algebra, Algebra 1, and Algebra 2 and even pre-calculus. So you gotta be able to identify something as a polynomial. Now you might be wondering about this number over here too. You're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't see a uh, variable here with this too. Why are you calling that a polynomial? Well, you can see here I have the variable m. I could write two, this two as two m to the zero power. Remember zero is okay in terms of a polynomial. And m to the zero power is what? Well, m to the zero power or anything to the zero power is one. So really this is just two times one or two. But if I wanted to see this variable m in here, just to kind of satisfy my curiosity, whether two, I can think of two as a polynomial. Well, this is how you do it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into the actual procedure to do this multiplication. Now, before I finish this problem, take a quick second and consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help my channel grow on YouTube. And the whole reason I want my channel to grow on YouTube is so I can reach as many people as possible and help them in mathematics. I look at every person that uh, has subscribed. Now, by the way, if you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. But if you do subscribe to my channel, I consider all of you like students of mine. So I really try to be conscientious and post high quality math content. And my channel covers everything from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. Now, if you need math support, if you really need to learn mathematics, you definitely have to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you can get alerts when I post a new video. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. So let me erase all of this right here. 
and sometimes I teach uh, more than I probably should in one video just because I don't want anyone to walk away with any misunderstandings. This is all really important stuff in algebra. So let's get back to our original problem. So we have negative 4m times 3m squared minus 5m plus 2. So what we need to do here is use something called the distributive property. This is one of the most important properties in mathematics. So let me show you a quick example of it. So let's suppose I had 2 times 10. All right, so 2 times 10 is what? Well, of course, the answer is 20. But we can break up this 10 as a sum or difference of any combination of numbers. Let's take a look at it this way. Let's uh, say we have 2 times 7 plus 3. So 7 plus 3, of course, is 10. So 2 times 7 plus 3 in parentheses would also be 20. So, of course, uh, we have to kind of keep in mind the order of operations, or PEMDAS, right? So we have to do parentheses first. So 7 plus 3 is 10, and then multiplication last. So 2 times 10, again, is 20. But anytime you have a number being multiplied, or anything being multiplied by a sum or difference, you can approach this problem using something called the distributor property. And the way this works is you just take this number, sometimes it's a number or sometimes it's a variable, and what you can do is distribute it to the things inside of the parentheses. Okay, so this is either going to be a sum or difference. So 2 times 7, so when we use this word distribute, what we're talking about is multiplication. So 2 times 7 is what? Well, that's 14. And we have an addition problem, so we'll put plus here. So 2 times 7 is 14, and then 2 times 3 is 6. All right, so 14 plus 6 is what? Well, it's 20. So the distributive property is another way we can do multiplication. All right, so obviously it works with numbers, but it also works with variable terms as well. And we're going to apply the distributive property right now to this problem. So we're going to take this negative 4m and multiply it by each one of these terms. So let's just go ahead and carefully do this. So negative 4m times 3m squared. Matter of fact, we'll just leave it like this for the time being. So we're going to multiply this times this. So negative 4m times 3m squared. We'll figure out the answer in just one second. Minus negative 4m. Now here you got to be very, very careful. Right? This is where a lot of students make a mistake. So we have a negative times a negative. This is going to be positive. So when you're doing a problem like this, you can change this negative value into a plus negative because we are taking this negative value, negative 4m, and multiplying it by negative 5m. Now, if you're up to speed on your positive and negative numbers, you know the answer is going to be positive. But uh, we'll just kind of add this uh, this way. We'll have negative 4m times another negative 5m, or times negative 5m, rather. Okay, so here is uh, negative 4m times this term. And let's scoot this over so we can make uh, enough room for our last uh, term. So we have negative 4m times 2. So this would be plus negative 4m times 2. All right, so I kind of squeeze that in, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So now let's just do this final multiplication. So we have negative 4m times 3m squared. So when you're multiplying two monomials, you first multiply the number parts. So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Now here I have an m, or m to the first, times an m squared. So the way this works in algebra m to the first times m squared. Anytime you are multiplying two powers with the same base, and that is the bottom of value in a power, all you have to do is add the exponents, right? So m to the first times m squared is equal to m to the third power. And this makes sense. It's like saying, OK, we have m times m squared, or m times m. Why? Of course, m times n would be m squared. So m times m times n would be m to the third power. OK, so let's go ahead and write that now. So we have negative 12 to the m to the third power. So that is our first term. So now moving on to our second term, we have negative 4 times a negative 5. That's going to be a positive 20. And then m times m will be m squared. 
And then lastly, we have negative 4m times 2. So negative 4 times 2 will be a negative 8m. All right, so this is our final answer. Now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face and an A+. Plus. But hopefully you learned something new here, whether it be about uh, the terminology or maybe you have a better understanding of the distributive property. But I can tell you right now, all this stuff is critical for your success in algebra. Now, remember, when you study algebra, you kind of do it in phases, right? So when you first learn algebra, you take a course like pre-algebra. That's like basic algebra. And then you continue on in algebra one. Now, first year algebra is like a review of pre-algebra. Then you learn additional things. And then you continue on in a course like algebra two or college algebra. And again, you kind of review algebra one and learn new things. And this uh, process continues into courses like pre-calculus, et cetera. So pretty much um, all math courses are kind of, uh, for the most part, kind of review of the previous material uh, that you learned as a foundation. And then of course you kind of build uh, on top of that. And that is why it's so important to have a strong math foundation to build upon. Now, if you need help in anything mathematics, whether it's algebra, geometry, trigonometry, pre-calculus, uh, test prep, homeschooling, make sure to check out all my courses. You can find links to all of those in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.